three. Hello, everyone. Welcome to FCDallas.com, live on YouTube. Thank you to everyone who joined in our chat today for Digital Tuesday. We're counting down to opening day, just four days left. Can you believe it? Maybe we saved the best one for last. We're here with Technical <laughs> Director Fernando Clavijo. We took your questions uh, on Twitter today, so we've got about 12 questions for Fernando. Um, Fernando, first off, like we said, four days away from opening day. How are you feeling right now? Um, I would say relax. First of all, Daniel, it's a pleasure to be here with you and with all of you guys out there. Uh, excited, to be honored with you. Excited um, the way we finish the season, the way that um, we start looking for a coach, uh, and the amount of time that we have to do all to that together, finding a coach and finding the players. Uh, you never think you have enough time, but um, to be honored with you today, looking back and looking ahead, yeah. all positive, yeah. all positive, and I'm ex extremely excited for it. So we've got 12 questions. We're going to put All you right. through the ringer. The first question is from at Tom underscore FC Dallas. How will at FC Dallas 2014 team differ from the 2013 team? I think that um, we, we're clear in the positions of how we want to play. I think that uh, with, uh, we, we have recognized some of the players um, um, we needed to move for different directions. I, I always say it's not a, that it's not a good player. The fit didn't right. fit what we're trying right. to do um, with a new coach. So uh, we sit down with Oscar, we went over uh, what did we think it was the right thing to do and, and what direction he want to go. Mm -hmm. We named players, I brought in players, um, he got a chance to see them. And then of course in, in, in the, the second part is trying to finalize the deals. Right. Uh, extremely happy, I'm extremely happy, I can't complain. I think the team is going to be quicker, I think the team, if I can say the team is going to be quicker having mm -hmm. Fabian Castillo last year. <laughs> It's an understatement, but yeah. when you have the play that we bring him back into the game, uh, into FC Dallas, and you see some of these guys like Andres Escobar and the new kids like mm -hmm. Danny Garcia, uh, Teseda, uh, and Mauro, yeah. you know, with a full season, I think the people are going to be excited. I think they have to be excited, not only the good players, the quality individual that can play, mm -hmm. and they're young. Yeah. He's talking about under 22. Yeah. So um, extremely excited for the potential that we have uh, put it together right now. And it feels like the, the depth, looking at practice, there's really competition at every single position, Al almost sometimes two or three deep competition. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when you're talking about right now, uh, you've been missing some, some, some key players on the team. Somebody can step in and play and not really lose that much right. of a level right. on, on the players. That's a, this, is a, this is a good testament to what we're doing right now, but also to the academies, right, right. to the work at the academies. You're talking about the Danny Garcia, who uh, is going to he's going to have some some minutes. Mm -hmm. He has some minutes. He has some quality of play. He's going to be excited to see, yeah. and I think uh, excited for me to see that we can do that, bring in players from our own from our own academy. So, right, right. looking forward to all of that. Yeah. So the next question from at Miss Bell two. How far do you think the team will go this season? <laughs> Put you on the spot. You know what? I, I have to be honest with you. Uh, usually I don't make predictions or anything like uh -oh. that, but I, but I will. I'm telling you right now, and they can happen. We, right now, we're healthy when you're talking about players and 2014 season. The only injury players that we have, we're dragging from mm -hmm. 2013 season. And some of the players were obvious to everybody else, like a George, like a Zach, like a Raul. Mm -hmm. So those guys into the system are healthy. I think we have a team to really compete for winning a championship. Yeah. And not saying that, it would be trying to find an excuse. I'm not here to find yeah. excuses. Mm -hmm. I think we have the quality of the players. I think we have something we never had before in the midfield. Mm -hmm. And I think we have a quality individuals and, and a good coach to put us on a, a, a different level. I think we'll get to that midfield one in a minute. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about another midfielder next uh, from at GS Elitist. Where's the coverage behind Mauro Diaz in terms of depth? Or can he count on a siding or trade? I think everyone realizes the depth that we talked about. But behind Morrow, you don't have really a true center attacking midfielder fit there. So I think that's kind of what he's asking. If Morrow was to go down, kind of what do you see? Where do you see the team going? Well, first of all, make sure that Morrow doesn't go down. <laughs> you know, make sure that we keep him healthy and we protect him enough. Uh, he's smart enough to be able to get away from that. But we all know that how sure. physical our league is. Sure. And they, it's going to be a target. They're going to go for it. Um, again, at the same time, Danny Garcia, I just mentioned it. Yeah, I yeah. think he can be a player 
that is a little bit different, but it's also a playmaker. It's a little bit different. And then, then you're talking about Teixeira. We're talking about yeah. one, one striker. What happened if we're playing a 4-4-2? Yep. More of a wide player going forward with the two strikers, that it could be a system that Oscar uses at any given time. Mm -hmm. So then we have Blas, then we have Teixeira, plus some of the other younger players that we drafted. The flexibility so of, of I think uh, we have flexibility, yeah. correct. I think we have flexibility with the formations. I think it can adapt. We're working on it. Tactically, er, every week, I see this team work on those situations. But more than anything else, I think Garcia could be the man if we needed to play in that position. Next question from at Spevin. What would be the position to target in the summer transfer window? And he also mentions a backup attacking midfield role. You've done a lot of work over these last few weeks bringing players in. And, uh, but if you were to target something, I, I realize it's probably tough to know right now uh, without seeing the first three months of the season. But I guess maybe kind of where do you feel like you can still improve the team? Well, I, I think that um, we have unknown mm -hmm. uh, in Moises, but he has done extremely well in preseason. Um, he's done well, but Moises is, is something new to us. We mm -hmm. see uh, we have Jair, who's mountain experience, not to say <laughs> age, mountain <laughs> experience. And really, that could be the position in the mid-season depend on how those three, Michel sure. and him, uh, Jair and Moises do. If they do well, we're okay with it. I think it's hard to say right now. It's all depend how healthy yeah. uh, the back four is. Right, right, right. Are we be able to recover the Walker Zimmerman, the Zach Lloyd, and George sure. John? If we do, we exactly. set to go. So all depends. I think in soccer, every five minutes things change. Yeah. Yeah more specifically in what's going to happen in 2014. But it would be really, um, I would say, premature of me to say in what position we needed to do it right now. The next question is one that's uh, been a hot topic recently. We saw it in L.A., adding the L.A. Galaxy 2. Um, where do you see, this is from at Shutter King, where do you see FCD standing in regards to an affiliate club or starting at FC Dallas 2 in future years? We have obviously so many young players on this team and in the academy. Kind of where do you see the club going in that direction? I, I think that um, we have identified a long time ago uh, that we need to have a place for our players from the academy. It's a, too big of a gap. Yeah. Get out of the, uh, of the academy, go into the pro level. This year we have done a, an incredible job uh, closing down the gap. We took um, uh, Aaron Mayer, we took uh, Coit uh, to our trip in, in Abu Dhabi. They show up, they went to, to Florida. They play quality games. You can see that that experience from the academy to the first team is getting better and better. Uh, but we need to have a place. We need to have a place. Um, getting together with another club and trying to, uh, in my personal opinion, I don't think will work. Yep. Because um, we're talking about bringing maybe more international uh, players young that we can really test in the USL environment. Can they do it or not? Yep. Can we bring academy players that are not ready for the first team, put them in a USL Pro? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think if you ask me in what direction we will go, I will definitely vote for the one. Be your own, mm -hmm. have your own team, work them hard enough, but control it at the same time. Yeah. Work with the coaches coach that you have in the first team and put it together so make sure that you have a, a link that works, right. that you're not forcing anybody to play in, in, in one way or another and play some of the players that you have no interest on it. Right. So I think at the end of the day, I do not know is that the direction we're going to go, but definitely the direction that we vote for it. Yep. Next question from at RealGerm75. Do you see any more player changes this year? <laughs> That's a, we're going to have you look into the crystal ball a little bit. That's a tough one to answer. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's hard. I, I do not want to. I think we, we come to the point, like you said, we balance. Mm -hmm. We have a, a, a very balanced right now roster. Mm -hmm. When you look at an everything, when you look at an age, we have some, uh, you look at the next, spine, right. in the front, in the middle, in the back. We have uh, some age uh, and the maturity in some of the play. We have younger players around. So I don't see that many of the changes. Mm -hmm. But again, I think the season will dictate sure. if we make some of those changes early on or not. Sure. This question is actually from me, <laughs> at D. Robertson FCD. What kind of, uh, this is the player you hinted at earlier, I think. Uh, what kind of impact do you see Hendry Thomas having on the field this year, and how important is having a strong defensive midfielder to hold things down? Almost going back to your playing days. I'm sure you've played with a few of uh, 
a few good defensive midfielders? I just mentioned, I mean, you have to have a, a, an alignment. You have to have a, a good um, spine mm -hmm. in your team to be able, not only that, when you look at uh, Andres Escobar, Fabian, Danny, Mauro, Teixeira, they're all young, they're all under 22. So you have to have some guidance. You have to have a guy who, hey, go and do whatever you want to do. I will protect you. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have that. We didn't have that. We, we searched for it last year. By the way, it was identified last year. We were not able to find him. So, and MLS more than any other league in the world. I think games are lost and won yeah. in the midfield. Yeah. So when you add somebody like Henry Thomas mm -hmm. to that, to that group of players. That was I think international you, experience, EPL experience. I think you just right there, you, you find the solution you were looking for. Mm -hmm. So I think it was going to be tremendous for us, the impact that it's going to have, not only in us, but also in some of our players. Mm -hmm. uh, it's tremendous. So I'm really looking forward to having in my side of the court this time. Speaking of Hendry, uh, what kind of connection, obviously there's the Oscar Pereira connection there. Um, was it Oscar who really really targeted him as a player that, that he knows that he can fit into the system? Yes, definitely. Uh, Oscar and I, we got together and we look at all these players and make sure that what works. But I have to be honest with you, this player has been in the, in, in, on, on the record for a long time. Yeah. And, He's but, a guy we hated playing against, I can tell you that. And, uh, from the press box. And I have you, to be honest with you, he's also him. jealous like him yeah, yeah. a lot. Uh, again, it was not the proper time, not the right time, because we, we were not able to, to do anything. But uh, things fall into to place mm -hmm. this year. Plus, Oscar really pushing for him, a player that he wanted to. I think we, 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 um, we find a way to do it mm -hmm. uh, much easier than in the past. So, you know, it happened. He want to stay in the United States. He want to play for Oscar at the same time. Yeah. It was an easy decision for us. And I think it was an easy decision for him, too. We're going to take a walk down memory lane with this next question. Oh, my gosh. From, uh, from at Red Carter. Do you have good memories when you were a former Los Angeles Lasers great, the indoor soccer team Los Angeles Lasers? I don't know if I was ever great, put it out. <laughs> uh, but thank you anyway for that comment. Number one fan right here. Um, I always, to be honest with you, I have great memories, but not the memories that I enjoy. Uh, probably there was a team that I made more money. Um, I felt like a mercenary. I went there because of money. Mm -hmm. um, Jerry Boss was the owner. Really? Uh, and I was an all-star, an MVP, best defender in, in San Diego. And for some reason, I became free agent. Not even ask me until day to day. And pretty much money took me to LA. Mm -hmm. It was not a place that I want to be. Uh, so money took me there. Um, but I went away from what I was used to, winning. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have a good season, and we have an all-star team. And I always look back and I say, money doesn't buy a championship, players do. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't have to really buy, you have to have a good group that fights together. The sum of the whole team. Correct. Yeah. And, then, uh, and we didn't have that. Yeah. We didn't have an LA. Great, great opportunity, good coach at the time. It was coaching there. Um, great people, by the way, great people, great organization. But um, I prefer winning championships, yeah. which I did with San Diego all the time. Um, and, and, but today, I say today because I'm older. Uh, <laughs> but at the time, money was important, of course. And, uh, but um, good times, really good times. Yeah. Our next question from at Brian DBG. What's your most useful tool when scouting talent? This is an interesting one. I think contact. Mm -hmm. I, I have to be honest, um, I probably receive 100 to 150 players a month in the off-season, that's double, mm -hmm. uh, videos and, and things like that from players. Um, what's going on um, is two types, the play they can come and play, mm -hmm. because we are a little bit different than the rest of the league. Yeah. You gotta remember that. We're not looking for the 29, 30 years old uh, that are really prove it to the world. And really, there's nothing to prove to anybody when it comes here. Yeah. So what does it come here for? Um, I prefer to look at the younger guys who are angry, who really want to show everything the so Mauro they can jump. The Mauro Diaz, the Fabian, the Andres, the Teixeira. Mm -hmm. So they can find uh, an environment that help them mm -hmm. to grow in their careers too. 
So when, so when I look at them, always talking about contacts, why that player is available, mm -hmm. number one, and that's where I go about it. Then we have to watch probably 10 games, uh, DVD, game time. I mean, we're sitting down and watch a game, watch them play. A specific, um, just the whole game is different than, than the highlights real yeah, that they yeah. send you. Um, so okay. then I look that, and then I have to go myself and talk to those players. Number one, because what kind of individual is it? Uh, what kind of a player you bring them. Every time you bring a player, your reputation is in place too. Okay. Not only that they may miss as a player, but it also means as a person. That, uh, as a person. Uh, and that mistake, can, uh, it cannot happen. Yeah. Uh, so it, it goes live. But I, if I will say any tool, any tool is uh, contacts, yeah. for yeah. sure. You talked about it a little bit with the David Teixeira signing, the contacts. Can you talk a little bit about that one as a guy you had been tracking? ever since, even before you were at FC Dallas? Oh, much, much before there was in a, you know, and that's funny, we're talking about 2011, uh, U-20 World Cup in, in, in Colombia. Uh, two guys caught my eyes right away in that tournament, um, and one of them was uh, David Teixeira, and the other one was Camilo Machada, which is not anywhere, but it's not because the kid is playing at the highest level, but they always ask it too much money. Mm. So it's always an issue there. Uh, David Teixeira, he killed in a, world, in a World Cup. Every single scout, you can think about it, it was there uh, from all over the place, from Russia, from, uh, from the Netherlands, from Belgium, from Norway, from England. Um, at the time, um, Groningham took him, yep. took him away. Uh, they had done a, a pretty good job of scouting players from Uruguay. Yeah. Uh, Suarez, some, yeah. yeah, some of these guys, uh, were the name Luis Suarez. Yeah, 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 maybe we've heard of him. <laughs> but they have done a great job. Uh, and I went back. I went back to this coach in the U20 coach. I went back to the coach of the Uruguay national team. I went back to Aguirre, which used to coach him too in Uruguay. So I went out to all my contacts we're talking about. And this kid is um, of everything what we want to have yeah. uh, in, in the United States. He's young, he's strong, he fights, he works his heart out, mm -hmm. and he finishes it. Yeah. So I think that people are going to be very excited. So, and you're excited to have a Uruguayan on the squad? For the first time, in, the my, first time. in my career, uh, as a coach, uh, I've, don't ask me why. Maybe because always they ask too much money. Uh, <laughs> we heard but, that uh, earlier from the, uh, from the Los Angeles one. So, yeah, so <laughs> I, but uh, I mean, excited, excited that he went back into the, mm -hmm. into uh, being available. Uh, and I have a great relationship with the, with the president and the technical director in Groningham, which they're coming to watch one of our games. Hmm. And, uh, but I'm telling you right now, it's quality, and I think the people in Dallas are going to be extremely happy with what we have. Next question from Red Army Hooligan. All right. How about you come down to the beer garden and stand with us for the home opener? Only if they buy me a glass of beer, I guess I can <laughs> afford that. But if you guys do it, you have me there for sure. There you Absolutely. Go. There you go. I, you know, do you know how many times I want to go down there, but I'm afraid they're going to beat me up sometimes. <laughs> so, but if you promise not to beat me up, I promise to go down for sure. All right. Next one from Brian DBG again. Similar question to what he asked earlier. When you hear of a player that may fit a need, what do you rely on most before deciding to see him in person? I guess it's the contacts. I guess you can it's talk about contact. talking to people. Absolutely, so you know you getting information opinion. because um, when you see in video, it doesn't really necessarily tell you what kind of individual he is. Mm -hmm. And again, remember, you have a locker room. Yeah. Uh, is he a loner? Is he a guy who uh, think chemistry is everything? Mm -hmm. And I always say, and I mentioned before, money doesn't buy championships. Players, do. I mean. When you have a chemistry in the locker room, yep. that does marvelous teams to I mean, a we team. We saw it in L.A. It took them 100 years. 100%. They, they got the so you have to work with a kind of uh, what kind of individual. Is, is he a team player? Mm -hmm. Is he a guy who only cares about him? Is he a guy who is not going to assist because he wants to score a goal, yeah. uh, maybe missing the championship, but getting more bonuses? Yeah. They are those players. Mm -hmm. Believe me, they are. So you try to get all the information before you're making some of those decisions. Our last question. All right. From AC PC 23 Anthony Campise. We know him from our FC Dallas Special Olympics team. 
He submitted the question, are you excited about teaming with Special Olympics Texas and the FC Dallas Special Olympics team in Flower Mound? We saw them earlier this year. We did. Uh, what a great moment. One of the best moments of the season. I believe that was after the Seattle game to end the season. We saw you down there. We don't have the information yet on when their game is going to come up this year, but, but uh, how excited are you to be teamed with them? Uh, I'm excited uh, to the point that even if we are playing on the road, I will stay home to make sure that I have that game. Uh, I, I think we, we, as a former pro, mm -hmm. We have to take the time to, to, to more needed people. I think we have to do that. It's, a, it's an obligation that we have. And I've been one of the luckiest ones. It had given me an incredible career. And it's still in soccer after 58 years. Uh, I, I want to give it back. I want to make sure that in any way, shape, or form that I can do, make sure the Special Olympics have a special place with me too. That's all, that's all the time. I survived. You survived. I you survived. We're done with our Digital Tuesday chats. Thank you for everyone who participated in all of the chats. Like we said, four days left. We've got cocktails and cleats on Thursday night. Come out. Fernando will buy you a drink, maybe. Uh, and I'm going down on Saturday, but somebody needs me to, to buy it. garden? Of course. Okay. You need to buy me a drink. Yes. If not, I'm not going. <laughs> so we'll see you Saturday, four days away. If you don't have your tickets, get your tickets now. FC Dallas against Montreal Impact, our home opener presented by Advocare. We will see you on Saturday night. Thanks to everyone who joined the chat. Thank you, guys.